It's quite a rarity in this day and age for a wrestler to stay in one place for their entire career. The majority of talents tend to move around, opting to work for a variety of different companies, widening their wallets as much as possible. Now, typically, a complete character makeover occurs with the wrestler or wrestlers being given a new gimmick, new music, and a new name. However, not always, because in the curious cases of these superstars, the song remains the same. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Theme, and won't you please subscribe? Because here are 10 wrestlers who use the same entrance theme in different promotions. Listen up, sucka. No stock music track has become more popular in the world of professional wrestling than Rap Sheet, the eternal flame stomper that's been marking the arrival of the two-time WWE Hall of Famer Booker T for damn near 30 years. This good theme has been the soundtrack that has stayed right by Book's side from his days tagging with his older brother, Stevie Ray in WCW, right up until his return to the Squared Circle in 2022 at a Reality of Wrestling event, a promotion run by the former five-time world champion. Out of all the stars from WCW who came to the WWE, the master of the Spinneroonie was far and away the biggest success story. And you have to think that having the continuity of this tune intact gave him a leg up on the other talent who made the transition but flopped harder than a shucky ducky. Cody Rhodes has been able to use his iconic entrance theme in no less than six major wrestling promotions performed by the band Downstate. Kingdom is a tale of the road that Rhodes has traveled away from the WWE and how he changed the professional wrestling business before making a triumphant prodigal son return at WrestleMania 38. It was a pleasant surprise to see Cody continue to use this song as it indicated that the company was all in on the American Nightmare character. The rights to Kingdom are owned by the second generation star. Thus, he was free to bring the theme with him wherever he went, from Ring of Honor to New Japan, the NWA, Impact, AEW, and the WWE. Kingdom has played in the forefront of all of Cody's most memorable moments and will continue to be his anthem for many more to come. One of the greatest tag teams in the history of wrestling, the Hardy Boys have been wowing audiences for over two decades, all the while doing so with their signature theme song, Loaded. For years, many assume that the WWE owned the rights to Team Extreme's entrance anthem. However, this was proven to not be the case. Fans were pleasantly surprised to hear this theme play as Jeff Hardy made his AEW debut in March of 2022. It turns out that the song, despite being one of WWE's most in during themes was in fact never owned by the certified leader in sports entertainment. Licensed by producer Zach Tempest for the entirety of the Hardys WWE run, Tony Khan bought the rights to the song in order for the legendary brothers to continue to use their iconic music in all elite wrestling. While most entrance themes are reflective of the performer's character, Living Color's Cult of Personality is a song most heavily associated with CM Punk, the professional wrestler, but also with Phil Brooks, the real-life human being. As a boy growing up in Chicago, Punk's Little League team used this heavy hitter for a theme song. So for that reason, the straight-edge superstar has said that Cult of Personality has always occupied a special place in his heart. First used at the tail end of his time in Ring of Honor, Punk himself would pay the song's hefty licensing fee. However, when he re-signed with the WWE in 2011, one of the terms of his new contract was that Vince would foot the bill for this music. Now in AEW, Punk has been able to continue to use this banger thanks to the ample resources sources of his new boss and huggy bear extraordinaire Tony Khan.
A veteran of the professional wrestling business for over 25 years, R-Truth has truthfully done it all. Whether he is a serious main event level heel or a comedic babyface, he clearly loves what he does and always gives 100% in whatever role he is tasked with performing. Unlike other wrestlers who only start when the bell rings, Truth's performance begins as soon as his music begins playing. Aside from his career as a wrestler, Ron Killings is also a rapper and producer who has been able to fuse his two passions together. Singing his signature song, What's Up, Truth's high-energy lyrics have entertained and at times insulted the audience for years. And since Killings owns his entrance music, he checks in as the only entry on this list to have not only used the same music in different promotions, but also performed it himself on a regular basis. The NWO is one of the most influential stables in wrestling history, and the group's cool and cutting-edge theme song remains an instantly recognizable piece of entrance music. The porny guitar licks, the annoying Eric Bischoff vocals, and the outlaw feel of it all helped this track reach an unbelievably iconic status. Whether it was played during the Monday Night War or during the Hall of Fame faction's failed reformation when they came to the WWE in 2002. A gifted entertainer with an unparalleled level of flamboyance, the macho man Randy Savage was the cream of the crop. And the one thing that was always consistent with the macho man's charismatic character, except during his 1999 midlife crisis with his overinflated physique, ludicrous leather pants, and gaggle of girlfriends, was his iconic theme music. Using the classical composition Pomp and Circumstance, Savage's entrances were filled to the brim with prestige and and pageantry. Just ask any wrestling fan who's ever graduated from high school or college, and they'll tell you that it's impossible to not channel your inner macho man yo whenever you process down the aisle to this epic instrumental. As it's in the public domain, no single promotion had exclusive rights, so Randy was able to use it regardless of where he wrestled. The layers of music in this symphony are as colorful as the outfit Savage would wear, and this was a theme truly fit for a macho king. Virtually every big time wrestler is quickly associated with a theme song that signals his or her arrival. Now most casual fans would be quick to lump Andre the Giant into that little list. However, the eighth wonder of the world did have theme music at times, and I'm not talking about the random video game tunes that were made for him posthumously. This sinister sounding song called Giant Press by New Japan Pro Wrestling would accompany the frightening Frenchman to the ring in the land of the rising sun as he wrestled heel and went by the name Monster Rusimov. This song would also travel with Andre back to the United States and the WWF in 1986, when he allegedly wrestled as part of a masked group of wrestlers from the Orient called the Machines. To non-wrestling fans, Richard Strauss's also Sprach Zarathustra is one of the finest examples of classical music ever composed. However, to wrestling fans around the world, this masterpiece will forever be attached to the Rolex-wearing, diamond ring-wearing, kiss-stealing, wheeling-dealing, limousine-riding, jet-flying, son-of-a-gun, woo, legacy of Ric Flair. The Nature Boy has kept this incredible orchestral score across multiple promotions for the entirety of his Hall of Fame career. Now, while the song was originally featured in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, most associate this theme with the entrance of the nature boy, styling and profiling while walking that aisle. The booming timpani and bombastic horns match the grandeur of just how big Flair went with everything he did in his opulent life, both inside the squared circle and out on the town.
The Fabulous Freebirds revolutionized tag team wrestling during their Hall of Fame careers. Led by Michael P.S. Hayes, along with Terry Bam Bam Gordy, Buddy Jack Roberts, and Jimmy Jam Garvin, the Freebirds are also widely regarded as the first ever rock and wrestling act to have created their own original entrance theme song before anyone else jumped on that bandwagon. Written, recorded, and released in the early 1980s, Bad Street USA is a bona fide rock and roll song featuring a raging riff, an easy to sing along to chorus and some bad to the bone lyrics about the baddest street in the whole USA. Born and bred to be a sports entertainer, the charismatic Hayes gave us the blueprint for how to keep the same theme song throughout one's career. But let's face it, not everyone is as talented or able to do 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 quite like Michael can. 